Welcome back. I hope we had a small break. We will start with the answer writing session. Please allow me one minute to start sharing the content. Presentation is now visible on your screens. So we will be yes, starting. <laughs> so thank you so much, sir, for responding.
so now yeah i will i was just waiting because some of the participants have unmuted i will request the participants to kindly mute so that there is no voice echo and we can hear the session thank you so much let us start the forenoon two session in which we will be discussing about certain skills which are required when we are preparing for the union public service commission combined geo scientist examination this will be the eighth in the series of sessions which are being conducted as a part of the preparation in this session 8 it will be divided into two parts in part 1 discussing about the answer writing skills for the upsc combined geo scientist examination part 2 will deal as to how to avoid certain common mistakes which may be done by an aspirant while preparing or appearing combined geo scientist examination let's discuss about the first part this for this part include to provide guidance to the aspirants regarding how to improve the writing skills how to go for a better presentation of their answers in order to score high marks how to incorporate charts flow diagrams and other schematic representation in their answers and certain tips for writing impressive answers for getting out with high scores in the mains examination answer writing skill is in fact something which can definitely be developed by any serious aspirant because the answer writing skill involves the attempt to present your information in such a manner that the examiner is able to get an idea that the candidate is completely aware he is a well read aspirant and he knows how to communicate his information in a precise crisp coherent and proper structured manner let's try to understand what an examiner wants in your answer sheet so that he or she is convinced to give you the maximum marks which you deserve for your knowledge having knowledge is not adequate enough you must also be able to communicate and present your knowledge in a coherent manner a well structured and well written answer is indicative of a sorted organized and well read mind and it is these minds that the commission seeks to select the commission wants to select the aspirants who are well read so when writing the answer let us first of all discuss certain important queries which are generally students for the for the examination in answer to frequently asked questions or faqs may i start with the fact that any aspirant must always attempt all the required number of questions please do not leave any question unanswered give me your best shot since we do not have any negative mark in the stage 2 or mains examination it would be enough 
that an aspirant makes an earnest attempt to answer all the questions to the best of his or her ability. For this, you can try to put in your best efforts for all the required number of questions. Now, they are asking certain queries regarding which questions to be attempted. Definitely, the second most important aspect is a very mindful selection of questions. Therefore, it is important that when you are selecting questions, you should always select questions in which you feel that you will be most comfortable in writing the answers. Have the requisite information. You can recall the information confidently and you will also be able to represent it in a structured in a schematic diagram in a flow chart. Once you have selected the right questions to be answered, your answer must be divided into a proper introduction. This few lines of introduction will help to create an atmosphere that the aspirant is well aware of the right answer and the information which is sought for in the question. It also sets the tone for the rest part of your answer. The next is going to be the main body of your answer where you will be putting the required diagrams, the required equations, formulae, solving the answers or discussing and enumerating the points which are required as per the question. Lastly, you must have a logical conclusion to your answer. Therefore, when your answer has a proper introduction, body and conclusion, it gives also an insight into your mind frame. It suggests that even under the pressure of writing the examination, even under the constraint of time, a particular aspirant is sorted out in his mind and is also confident of structuring the answer. He or she is not only telling the right answer, but also providing it in a proper coherent format. When you are answering any particular query or any question in the examination, try to deconstruct your answer into different distinct points. Once you have sorted out the main five to six points or seven, eight points that depends on the question, once these points have been delineated, you can build upon each point individually so that two, three sentences on that particular point are mentioned. Once you deconstruct your answer into distinct points and build upon those points individually, it enables an aspirant to include all the required information. It also ensures that no aspect is left out of the answer. And it also ensures that there is a proper flow of information from the basic points building up to the advanced stage and proper conclusion to the answer. Let us see how this can be achieved. When you are writing an answer, you should try to have an order in that particular answer. It should be a gradation of information, one point leading to another and then to the next and then to a proper conclusion. So your answer must be very orderly. The expression must be effective to cast an impression 
on what you want to express and it should also be very exact. Please do not beat about the bush. As far as the Union Public Service Commission is concerned, it is the most unbiased and very active uh, institution which gives due consideration to the exact expression of the candidate. If you do not know the answer, they are very experts and they will definitely find out that the aspirant is trying to beat about the bush and not coming to the exact answer. This is not casting a good impression for the aspirant. Therefore, students must ensure effective as well as exact expression that this is required with due economy of words. You must try and make a practice to express your answer in the space limit which is provided in the UPSC answer sheet. So you must try to express yourself with minimum words. You must also try to keep in mind that the UPSC always tries to select the best. And one of the characteristic of an evolved, mature, educated mind, which is filled with requisite knowledge and also has the skills to put this knowledge into practice, is defined by a person who can express the entire idea in minimum words. You do not need to write pages and pages to express simple ideas. Therefore, whenever you have a coherent, structured and concise answer, this is what fetches the maximum marks in the commission examinations. Thus, you must make a note that your expression must be exact, effective. The answer must be structured and coherent and to the point. It must adhere to the exact query which is put forth in the question. The second aspect which an aspirant must take care of while answering is the one in which you must use a correct language, nevertheless a simple one. You are not required to have, you know, a very flowery language. You must practice due economy of words and for that to take place, it is important that you are using the correct sentence framing. The correct sentence framing is required in order to be able to show that your language skills are also at par with your information. So your technical understanding and your knowledge about your subject is extremely important and equal importance is given to a simple, effective and correct grammar. The spellings should be correct and your sentence framing should be accurate as per the grammar rules. That ensures that it is a perfect combination of knowledge, language, skills and orderly and effective expression and an educated, well-balanced mind. This is what they want to seek in a particular candidate while they are selecting the candidate. If you are answering, let us now see another important aspect which you must take into consideration. You must correlate your answer 
with related applications. So, if any particular aspect, for example, the satellites, or if you are going for radioactive dating method, or you are making a study of the mineral deposits of India, whatever are the related applications, they can be mentioned with suitable examples. Examples may be in the Indian context or even in the world context. Sometimes the question itself mentions that the answers may be illustrated or supplemented with the help of diagrams and some suitable Indian examples. In such a case, you are supposed to give an Indian example and the related applications. However, if only suitable examples is mentioned, you can nevertheless go ahead with any standard example which may relate to India or in any other part of the world. Let us come to the next aspect. You must support your answer with well depicted diagrams which may be drawn with the help of a pencil. All the diagrams, it is important that you have a suitable caption. A suitable caption is definitely required while you are answering so that your diagram denotes a specified idea, an objective, a reason as to why it has been included as a part of your answer. The diagram definitely needs to be well labeled so that all parts of the diagram along with the question, uh, caption which you have mentioned are in complete coherence to the query which has been put forward in the particular question which is being answered. Next, let us come to another aspect. Sometimes the question mentions to illustrate your answer with help of diagrams or sketches. Many a times they may not specifically mention that you need to give a diagram. Nevertheless, it is always suggested to incorporate some flowchart, a block diagram, or a schematic representation of the steps, if it is a stepwise derivation of formula, or it is a stepwise uh, method for some uh, uh, synthesis in organic chemistry, or stepwise mechanism of different chemical reactions. So such sorts of flowcharts, block diagrams, and schematic representation must be incorporated in your answer in addition to the text part which you are writing. So whatever you are writing, in addition to that, any answer which has diagrams and schematic representations always scores better marks. So it is requested that you go ahead with such representative and illustrative answers which tend to fetch better marks in the examination as compared to other categories. Then you may go ahead other skills which are required for answering. These answer writing skills include what is mentioned as keeping track of the time which is available, the space which is required, 
and the word limit which is there for answering. Therefore, an aspirant must suitably divide the time such that there is enough time being dedicated to each of the questions. You must try to finish off the answer to a particular question in the provided space and word limit. Another aspect which you must take care of is the aspect where a candidate's personality is also reflected in a neat, clean and legible handwriting. Here, the examiner is not looking for calligraphy. So it's not a question whether how beautiful your handwriting is. It is definitely soothing to the eyes if you write in a clean and legible handwriting. So please do not make any illegible handwritings in your answer sheet due to haste or paucity of time. And that is why you need to be mindful of the amount of time you can devote to a particular question. To finish off the question within the allocated space and the time which you feel is suitable such that you are able to answer all the questions. You have enough time to write in a proper handwriting in all the questions. Whenever you are choosing the questions, it is always better to attempt the questions which have less number of marks. For example, if you have two 15 marks questions or in that place, if you try to attempt three questions of 10 marks each, in both the cases, you are attempting 30 marks questions. But if you attempt 15 marks questions and two questions are there, your combined score may be less in comparison to the condition where you have chosen to answer three questions of 10 marks each. Such a condition because there are three questions to which you have given the answers and there are three places where you can get uh, marks. A combined total of all the marks tends to be generally in most of the cases higher than a candidate who has attempted only two questions of 15 marks each. So you, if you are comfortable and you know the answers, you try to attempt the questions with less number of marks so that your score is high and you are there in the final merit list. aspect is numericals and questions which involve diagrammatic representation. Questions involving numericals and diagrammatic representations are always more scoring. In fact, in numericals, if you give all the steps to the answer and your answer is correct, reported in the proper unit, you tend to get full marks for that answer. This may not be the case in an answer where you just have to discuss or elaborate or enumerate in text manner. Therefore, it is important if you know the numericals, if you know the formulae and you are sure you'll be able to do the calculation it is always better to go for numericals or the questions which themselves ask you to illustrate diagrammatically. Getting full marks in numericals diagram representation is much easier 
it is much more common rather than getting full marks in a question which involves text information. Now, whenever you are writing any formula or any equation, or you are, you know, putting forth the uh, uh, organic chemistry, inorganic chemistry, or physics and geophysics, it is important that you denote every term while you are writing an equation or a formula. So that should be specifically mentioned if you are using any symbols. So each symbol in the formula may be denoted properly. Now, when you are writing an answer, there may be certain keywords or key sentences which form the cornerstone of your answer. And the gist and the most important part which need to be answered. So, when that is the case, what you can do is that you can uh, simply use the pencil to underline those keywords and sentences so that you score much better. Whenever you are writing answers, try to write them in a bullet form. Now, when you are writing answers in, in bullet form means different points. You just try to have different points rather than having a paragraph. You can just write the main salient points, especially for uh, questions which involve five marks. You can go ahead with writing your answer in point form. Now, what it does it, it does three important aspects. See, in the first aspect, the examiner will immediately know that you know all the salient points of this particular question. The second is that it will save a lot of time in writing and, you know, creating complex sentences and using conjunctions, using the right grammar, preparing a proper syntax in the paragraph. So it saves a lot of time. You just write the salient points. And third is that if you write in point form, it is generally observed that the marks you score are much higher. So on all the three counts, in saving your time expressing to the examiner that you know the answer, scoring high marks, in all the three counts, it is very, very effective to represent your answer in the form of points. So it will help you in that manner. I have probably uh, am i audible can some of the aspirants respond please because somebody yes, is mentioning the, yes, the chat okay then neelu ji you may try to check the connection at your end please thank you so much so i will now be moving ahead uh, thank you saloni ji and ritapalli and all uh, all those who have responded to the question that also gives an idea that the audience is alert and listening to every sentence which uh, gives an an immense satisfaction when you are trying to communicate the others are attentive they are listening to you patiently so definitely thank you a lot let us move ahead try to illustrate your answers and your concepts with certain examples, as I said earlier, and certain applications. Now, why have I written this point over here? There is a specific reason. Earlier, I was discussing the structure of the answer. Here, when I'm talking about giving your answer in bullet form, I have noted down this point so that once you are writing the points of an answer, the last a point may be example, a such and such a place in India or abroad, so that you give a proper explanation. So if you remember, we had uh, over here, we had a uh, point over here. Hey. 
so we had a point over here when we were talking about the grammar and effective screening right so once we have uh, decided that okay uh, we will have a particular exact expression and we will be having it in a specified structured manner then even after that what uh, we can do is uh, the next step we said okay when you are having a particular legible handwriting you are trying to go in for the numericals then you want to denote every term so you are here to denote every term to the answer you want to have a better uh, representation of your formulae and equations so once you want to do that then illustrating a bullet answer with proper examples ensures your additional uh, marks or you can say additional means full marks uh, additional means supposing the examiner is trying to give you 3 marks so he tends to give you 4 or 5 because you have given very suitable examples right so this is what i meant now if you analyze the previous year question papers you can make a note of the topics on which the questions are being asked frequently this is what the uh, you know our newly joined officers in the geology chemistry and geophysics stream have done at their end and shared with you so the aspirants would have noticed that when the geology geophysics and chemistry stream people are talking they have provided a particular you know list of topics like uh, these are the most important topics from each segment of the paper so each segment of the paper they have delineated topics they have done it at their end and they have shared it with you directly you can use that information but may i suggest to the participants kindly do that at your end also try to analyze the previous year question papers note down the topics and the questions which are being asked frequently sometimes the same questions are also repeated after a gap of say 2 3 years nevertheless even if the questions are not repeated you can definitely note down the topics from which mostly the questions are asked once you have a list of those topics once you have a list of those questions which are repeatedly asked you can start practicing how to write answer to those questions so this is i suppose a very important exercise which must be done at the end of the aspirants must do it they can also make uh, use of the suggestions which have been provided by the uh, you know our joint newly joined officers but they must do this exercise at their own end also now the participants are also requested to keep on practicing the derivations the formula and the diagrams why because as already mentioned these are very very scoring so the more conversant you are the more adept you are the writing of answers needs to be impeccable it needs to be flawless it needs to be filled with the requisite information reflecting the knowledge level it needs to be represented in the form of schematic diagrams with proper captions and labeling reflecting the ingeniousness of the aspirant it must be having properly termed denoted formulas to show how thorough you are with the subject okay in numerical questions you must write down all the steps there is no scope of leaving out the steps please do not think that you can just write the final answer please pen down all the steps and give the correct unit and you must have some time sorted out at the end of the paper so that 
you can have some time for revising your answer sheet once you revise if you find any issues or if you find uh, something you have missed out or something probably strikes your mind you have not added you want to add another point all these aspects can be taken care of when you revise your answer sheet so revising the answer sheet is definitely one of the best method to uh, you know ensure that you have given the best answer and there is uh, nothing which has been left out from your end so now let's see some of the sample questions which are asked in different streams of the examination i mean whether it is the geology or hydrogeology or it is chemistry or geophysics this is uh, just to help the aspirants get a glimpse of the nature of questions which are asked by the upsc this is point 1 and point 2 of this exercise why uh, i have put it here is see uh, the sample question papers are available on the commission website you can go to the website and you can search for the previous question papers of the combined geoscientist examination you can definitely have that and you can try to make an analysis as to what is the nature of questions so i'll see some of the questions like describe the landforms produced by fluvial actions with indian examples so here you must note that it is being asked of you that all the landforms which are produced by fluvial action they need to be described by you so describe is the keyword you are supposed to give the proper description and they have said with indian examples so here if you are giving any examples of oxbow lake then supposing it should be an indian example you should not try to give any examples from the world over you are talking about natural levees so all the examples which you quote they should be of indian nature and for every landform you can provide a diagram with a caption so this is what is required this is how you are supposed to answer this particular question now supposing you have another question discuss the geochemical characteristics of rare earth elements so here the keyword is what are you supposed to do about the characteristics of rare earth elements you have to discuss when you are discussing simply describing you will just describe it in detail but when you are discussing then you should have all the possible uh, you know components you should have all the possible points and you should not leave out any characteristic because when you are discussing a discussion means a threadbare analysis so you should focus on such words see another example of a question enumerate the salient features of satellite imagery and aerial photographs enumerate means list down tell all of them so you have to pen down all the features which are important for satellite imagery and those which are important for aerial photographs another question it is asked in x ray fluorescence technique matrix effects interference in analysis so just comment and justify your answer so what you are supposed to do in this question first of all you have to comment on this particular sentence do you agree with this particular sentence are you aware that matrix effects interference in analysis 
So what is your observation? What is your uh, knowledge? What is your view? So you have to give a comment. And this comment has to be a critical comment. And then you have to justify your answer. If you agree with the uh, with the statement, then you have to justify, you have to give the example to justify your answer. This is how I agree. If you have any critical observation, that particular observation also needs to be justified. Describe the basic principles of radiometric dating of rocks is another question. So here, you have to describe the principle of radiometric dating, right? When it is specifically asking you to describe the basic principle, then please do not uh, ponder off or start with other aspects as to why it is required and all that. First, the most important aspect that the examiner wants to see whether the principle of radiometric dating has been properly answered okay so define the another thing is define magnitude of an earthquake straight away they are asking simply define so you are just supposed to write the magnitude of an earthquake and how you measure it so you tell the different scales of measurements and you say how it can be measured so the words like describe discuss enumerate comment, justify. So all this is what needs to be taken into consideration. As you can say, um, uh, from the selection of questions, it is visible to you, the participants, that they are not defined, they are not uh, restricted to any one particular stream. The questions have been selected from the geology paper, from the chemistry paper, from the geophysics paper. So they are representative of all the three streams. Let us make a note of another uh, set of questions. I hope uh, the participants have noted down questions which have been discussed here. So let us have uh, uh, an uh, observation of a few more uh, questions which can be seen. So this is another question to write a note on gravity anomaly at the mid-oceanic ridges. Now, if somebody asks to write a note, so that means you have to pen down the salient aspects of the gravity anomaly and when you are writing a note, it is important to have a proper introduction, body and conclusion because your note on gravity anomaly must encompass not only all the points, but also be presented in a very structured manner. Another very technical uh, question from the chemistry stream is Fe2O3 adopts inverse spinal structure while C A CO3, O4 adopts normal spinal structure. So how you can explain it? So here the emphasis will be how well you are able to explain the difference. Okay. Now what is Walther's law? So we know the Walther's law of facies. So first you are supposed, what is Walther's law? Means you are supposed to give the law and then you substantiate your answer by discussing the Pluvial facie model. So, Walther's law of facies, first you have to describe it and then you have to discuss in relation to the fluvial facie model. So, the fluvial facie model should be able to substantiate your answer. The way you describe and discuss about the fluvial facie it should substantiate the Walther's law. That is, it is in accordance with the Walther's law. Another question from the geophysics stream. So we are having questions from geology, geophysics, chemistry, all streams. Principle of gravity method and seismic method of exploration and application. So here you must discuss the gravity method principle and give its application. You must discuss the seismic method exploration principles and give the application. See another question 
from the geology stream which refers to paleontology part is to describe the internal structure of a brachiopod cell with suitable diagrams so here you not only have to describe the structure you also have to show the diagram they have specifically mentioned when they mention specifically there are different uh, marks allocated for the description in the text part and for a well labeled diagram so here it is in fact compulsory you have to give a diagram of the internal structure of a brachiopod cell and you must also describe it in addition another question from the geophysics stream is to draw the p wave velocity and s wave velocity and density variation with depth from the surface of the earth so here you have to show how the p wave velocity s wave velocity and density varies with depth from the surface of the earth it specifically mentions they want to have a neat sketch diagram so once they tell you to draw with the help of a sketch diagram a diagram with the proper caption and the proper labeling is extremely important and such uh, kind of questions if you draw the correct fully labeled diagram you are supposed to fetch uh, you know complete uh, full marks for such questions so it is important that uh, you are able to understand the key words har har question mein ek keyword hota hai ki what the examiner wants so you must have such keywords you must have i to see such keywords so that you are able to give the accurate answer so here writing a note explain what it is or substantiate your answer means it should be in consonance it should confirm it should be in relation to that then describe the structure or draw a sketch so these are the keywords draw describe enumerate substantiate write a note discuss describe so all this is required to be answered correctly let us have a look at some of the sample answers the sample answer for example if you have a question like explain the geostationary satellite orbits and the sun synchronous satellite orbits and their applications in remote sensing so you can just start with telling about the geostationary satellite orbits and application in remote sensing then you can tell about the sun synchronous satellite orbit the application in remote sensing and you can also illustrate your answer where you can use a pencil to draw a diagram and you can represent how a sun synchronous object is there and how a geostationary satellite is orbiting so the geostationary satellite orbit and the sun synchronous satellite orbit can be represented in the form of a labeled diagram so the diagram must definitely the diagrammatic sketch which you are making it must have a proper labeling it must have a proper labeling and your answer can be differentiated in point forms if you have it in point forms what will happen is that the examiner is very clear as to how the answer is supposed to be written and you are also required to give an example if you give an example here you give an example of insert satellite over here so giving example also means that the aspirant is very very clear as to what he or she is writing about or what he or she is talking about so giving the definitions giving it in point or bullet forms underlining certain keywords 
underlining keywords giving your answer in precise concise limited words exact structure giving it in bullet forms underlining the keywords or sentences giving the required examples putting the examples wherever applicable having a neat diagram which is labeled a diagram with a pencil and labeling it so all these factors will help to get you a maximum mark so if this is the manner how you will answer all the questions in due economy of space due respect to the number of words correct grammar correct spelling concise coherent crisp exact expression correct sentence framing underlining the keywords giving the required examples providing schematic well labeled diagrams with captions all this will help to get you maximum marks okay so this is extremely important that you keep these in point somebody is asking whether we are provided plain sheet or what uh, i don't know if you have been in the session in since the starting but uh, at the start of the session itself i have shown you a sample upsc answer sheet you can have a look at it this is a sample upsc answer sheet i hope it is clearly understood now by the participant uh, thank you for responding definitely it is my duty to answer all the queries and any queries which the participants either ask me or they put in the chat so immediately i will be responding thank you all so now let us go to the next aspect also if you have to answer for example you have certain uh, derivations to be done and you have to work out a particular series of steps then whatever is the problem which has been stated you kindly give introduce the problem and then when you are giving the equations as to step wise it is important that you give them a proper number so that there will be a sequence of steps and the examiner is very clear okay this is the first one and then you come to the second and then the third and then the fourth the fifth and finally the sixth conclusion okay so here you are supposed to you know uh, give it in a sequential manner and uh, you if you give a number it becomes very clear as i say the more systematic you are the more organized you are the more structured your answer is it gives an insight into your thought process it gives an insight into the personality of the aspirant and it shows that the aspirant is not only knowledgeable but a very organized individual the individual is very uh, confident and structured and uh, orderly in approach an orderly approach a well structured approach is required and all the steps you should mention so that you get full marks for this question so please do not leave out any step you should enumerate all the steps in detail okay after that say for example in addition to giving uh, the steps if you are required to give the explanation so after the sixth you have the seventh equation the eighth the ninth tenth and finally to derive your final formula now once you are deriving your final formula it is a good idea that you have given your steps numbers like 
in this slide it was like first second third fourth fifth and sixth steps after this the answer is continued you have seventh eighth ninth tenth step and in the eleventh step you have your final derivation so what you do is you just try to box it you just try to box it because here underlining will not do because it's not a text so this is a formula so you try to put a box around it that this is the final uh, derivation which you have got and how you have done and why you explain it so you can give the answer give a proper explanation as to why it is so so you must try to restrict your answers to the provided page limit so if it's a 15 marks question then they will give you a certain space and then again the next question will be written so whatever space they have provided for 10 marks question whatever space they have provided for the 5 marks question whatever space they have provided for 15 marks question uske baad you will have the next question so what you do is that you restrict your answer within the provided space so you must make a note to remember this so just uh, in Uh, addition to providing an elaborate discussion on how to develop proper answer writing skills suggesting how to write a good answer to fetch maximum marks giving a glimpse of sample questions from geology geophysics and chemistry stream giving a glimpse of sample answers giving a glimpse of the upsc uh, answer sheet we will now move ahead for certain tips as to how the most important parts which we have discussed in this session regarding answering skills i will just sum them up for important tips as to how you will go ahead for answering in the mains examination the first and most important practice answer writing from previous year question papers so go to the commission website download the previous year question papers and start practicing answers to them you must work on your speed as well as accuracy you have to answer within the specified space word and time limit but you also need to take care that the answer needs to be accurate for this the best idea is just go through the entire question paper in the first 5 minutes see all the questions try to make a mental note as to how much time is required to be distributed for answering the 5 marks 10 marks and 15 marks questions which you are attempting and leave out some time for revising your answer sheet you must carefully read and understand every question before you start answering so read the entire question what it is asking just don't see okay this is the satellite topic fine it's a satellite topic let me start writing about the satellite so it should not be you should not be in such a hurry there is constraint of time but there is not so much constraint that you cannot even carefully read the question kindly read the question it is asking for your comment or it is asking for a diagram or it is asking for indian examples or it is asking for the world's best example of this resource so accordingly you should answer then you must give special attention to words like write a note describe elaborate or if some sentence is given now you have to expand on it you have to elaborate on it discuss so you have to discuss both the pros as well as the cons so the either of the two has to be there 
write an essay on so then it has to be a proper essay kind of a format paragraph format is required and you must have an introduction and topic wise paragraphs and then a final conclusion analyze so whenever you are carrying out an analysis again you have to be very critical analysis has to be done so you have to be analyzing that particular statement in a critical manner so give special attention to these words what is the question asking is it asking you to describe or it is asking you to analyze is it asking you to elaborate or it is asking you to write an essay or a note and accordingly you should answer so as i said you have to give due consideration to space and word try to illustrate your answer with suitable examples if they ask you have to give because there are separate marks for examples if examples are not mentioned in the question nevertheless you give the example you score much higher than others your writing needs to be legible because a person cannot give you marks if they are not even able to read what you have written and as i said a clear legible handwriting also gives an insight to the personality of the aspirant that the aspirant himself is a very sorted out organized person give graphical representations to your answer wherever it is possible if it is asked you have to mention if it is not asked then also if you write a schematic representation if you draw a sketch if you give a graphical representation you will definitely have a much better answer and much better marks you will be scoring answer the required number of questions again i am saying please do not leave any question try to give your best shot at that and some marks you will be able to get because it's a written examination there are no negative marks there is no penalty for not giving the exact right answer so you can try to attempt all the questions whenever a question asks you to explain then your explanation has to be logical and sequential one step leads to the other to the next to the next finally to the conclusion so your explanations must be very logical and sequential and before you submit the answer sheet kindly revise whatever you have written if there is any scope for improvement improve your answer if you have not had time earlier you have not drawn a sketch or diagram draw it now if you have left out a caption from a diagram put it in place if some labeling is missing ensure that the diagram is properly labeled if some point you left out try to incorporate it if you have not been able to underline some keywords or important sentences in your answer try to do it if you have not provided a captioned box to your final derivation or formula and enclose it in a proper caption box if you have not given the meaning of certain terms certain uh, symbols which you have used in your formula give it if you do this before submitting your answer sheet definitely you will be earning some 15 20 points extra otherwise if you would have submitted your answer sheet without revision then what would have happened you would have lost these marks so kindly revise your answer sheet before you submit them this is what i wanted to discuss with the participants regarding the answer writing skills so whenever you have the notification for the examination whenever you have the notification for the examination kindly uh, go through the notification and kindly see that whatever specifications have been provided in the notification accordingly you make 
you know you try to uh, follow those particular instructions for that particular year of examination right so somebody is asking why is it important to underline the keywords while answering what impression it makes on the examiner okay so what we are trying to do here is that we are simply trying to uh, you know uh, there is a query for example i have to describe a certain aspect so i just want to catch the attention of the examiner that a particular aspect has been answered correctly if there is some keyword or some very important sentence i underline it with the help of a pencil so that it is it comes to the notice of the examiner that yes that particular aspect has been answered it is just a small highlighting skill it is i'm not saying it is compulsory it is simply suggested because it immediately catches the attention of the examiner that the requisite information has been provided right so that is the idea okay so uh, now once we have discussed about the answer writing skills i will just take uh, the remaining time which we have in the forenoon session to discuss about certain common mistakes which can be avoided when you are appearing for the mains examination so in this session we will just be discussing about some of the mistakes which sometimes inadvertently are uh, made by the aspirants how we can avoid them and what are the important aspects which we need to make note when we are preparing for the exam and also when we are appearing for the examination so these we will be discussing in this part 2 of the session so let us have a look at some of the mistakes which are admitted by previous aspirants they have discussed and they have mentioned that these were some of the uh, inadvertent mistakes which were done from our end uh, due to which probably i was not able to score that much high because you know every mark in the examination counts as you know it's a competitive examination so every mark you secure in the exam is important and every mark which you lose is also a great loss so in order to avoid losing marks and in order to ensure that you get the maximum uh, possible marks for the efforts which you have put in for the preparation let us see some of the things which you should avoid so that uh, you do not lose okay so the first thing is sometimes people try to be very very selective there is absolutely no issue in focusing on certain areas you can definitely give in your best efforts to prepare certain segments from which the questions are asked frequently nevertheless in the first round of your preparation which you should start minimum 6 months before so in the first round of your preparations you must prepare your entire syllabus you should not have any topic which has not been prepared properly by you so the first round of preparation should be such that you prepare the entire syllabus and do not leave any topic unprepared only in the second stage of your revision you may start more focus and uh, you know you should have more focused approach to the uh, topics which you feel are likely uh, to be having questions in the coming examination so you can have more attention and more practice for those selected topics nevertheless you must try to prepare the entire syllabus that is point 1 and definitely as i have said it is really important that you attempt all the questions because it's a written examination you must try to attempt all the questions the selection of question is 
also important there are many times the aspirants say that i felt i will be able to answer the question but when i started writing the answer then i felt that probably another question would have been better answered by me nevertheless since i had lost time in answering the uh, question i could not go back and answer another question but later on i realized that it was a better choice so when you are choosing when you are selecting the questions to be answered you must have a wise selection and make a thorough understanding which is the question which can be answered best by me you should always attempt to those questions then time management many times people come out and they will start saying i did not have enough time to answer so i could not uh, revise or i did not have enough time to answer so i had left one question unanswered i left two questions one answered so this is because you have not divided your time equally in all the number of questions which you have to do so you must have effective time management okay and give your answer in the provided space try see here do not try to write outside space do not try to have some sentences which are having any problems do not try to put your uh, ppm values or some other values in percentage be very careful about the unit which you are using for any particular uh um, thing and then try to give certain source of your data also if the data is random it is not accepted try to write only within the uh, you know uh, try to write only within the boundaries of the answer sheets otherwise uh, uh, the people may feel that uh, you are going beyond the boundaries then if you are giving any explanation to anything it should be a proper explanation it should not leave certain things uh, you know uh, unanswered by the aspirant so you should not leave certain things unanswered it should be within the boundaries your sentences your spellings your expressions your syntax should all, always be proper then whenever you have trying to have all the points supposing all of them are actually having a uh, a uh, merged uh, in fact they are connoting a single aspect do not try to simply elaborate it just to show that you are writing so many points right so do not try to do like this try to have a separate point only if it is a separate heading or it it is a different idea it's a different topic do not try to simply elaborate uh in a single component into multiple components because these things they feel that you should not have done it like that a single point cannot be just simply you know repeatedly stated for different points so sometimes uh they feel that you are trying to extend the answer in this manner so just stick to what is the accurate information being asked you need not as i said beat about the bush you need not answer collateral things you need to be very specific and precise and whenever you are having as i said sometimes in the formula you use expressions but what is that particular what expression that particular thing is denoting so people tell me i have written the formula i have written the uh, exact final derivation but i have not mentioned the terminology which has been used so that is extremely important because unless and until you mention the terminology which is being used that does not uh, denote a specific meaning to the examiner mostly when you are answering numericals there are unit conversion involved uh may i request the participants to kindly be on mute please there is some sound coming from the background so when you are answering the numericals you know uh, many a times they will ask you uh, in a particular unit but the 
values which are provided are not in that unit so you need to convert the unit and then give your answer so unless and until sometimes they felt oh i have done the correct calculation calculation is correct but i did not convert it in the required unit so if the unit is not correct then what happens is that your answer becomes erroneous so it is important that whenever you are answering it has to be converted into the proper unit many times uh, so many aspirants are telling i forgot to convert the unit i did the calculation correctly so calculation is important but the correct uh, statement and the correct unit of measurement is equally important so you must answer the numericals in the correct unit of measurement this is important because uh, many of my friends colleagues and certain aspirants uh, said regarding the same thing whenever you are writing the derivations whenever you are having a flow chart expressions whenever you have the formula derivation or the organic chemistry the synthesis steps in fact so all these steps you should not jump steps okay fine directly from um, uh, you know acetone you are just jumping to the alcohol synthesis step you should write the intermediary steps so you should not step uh, leave out any step and you must revise your answer before submitting because the people who revised were able to gain uh, you know marks by uh, correcting certain aspects themselves rather than the examiner correcting them but uh, those who did not have the time who did not manage the time effectively they had to submit the answer sheet uh, without revision and they were themselves not sure if something was uh, missing in their answer sheets before submitting it so these are the uh, some of the things which you should uh, try to keep a track of to avoid any such mistakes which were done by previous aspirants and uh, try to make the maximum of the chance provided to you so that uh, there is not uh, uh, in any iota of uh, uh, space that you will lose out on certain marks there is no iota of problem that you will feel that uh, i lost marks because of certain issues so that's why uh, it is better you take care of such aspects from the beginning itself if you ensure it during your preparation i'm absolutely sure that uh, you will come out with flying colors in the final examination and make a very high uh, position in the final merit list where uh, your selection will be ensured keeping in mind you start your preparation minimum 6 months before in the first stage you try to cover the entire syllabus so that you don't have to leave out any questions in the second stage you focus out on the frequently asked questions and the topics and try to have a more focused approach a more insightful approach a more in depth detailed st uh, study for this uh, particular uh, topics so that in case they are asked you are much better prepared to answer them try to answer in a good handwriting legible handwriting in the correct grammar correct sentence framing try to have uh, labeled diagrams and captioned ones try to have good sketches try to give examples and try to have the uh, terms denoted of the formula to ensure all these things i am definitely sure that you answer like this and you uh, then revise your answer sheet correct any information and then submit it you will definitely score very high marks there are certain queries which i can read in the chat box see advertisement against a particular post uh, i think it has been answered and that depends upon the vacancy year so i think that has been taken care of and uh, they will be providing space in the answer sheet the answer sheets are also available online so they provide certain uh, space in the answer sheet within that space you are supposed to write if they provide the word limit 
for that you have to see the question paper for every different question you have to see what is the marks you have to see what is the space they have provided in the answer sheet and accordingly you have to answer it generally for 10 marks you will have two pages two two sites to answer for 15 you will have three sites to answer for five marks you will have some space and then another question so you are supposed to limit your answer in that space and uh, session, uh, yeah, geology and hydrogeology session has already been covered. Definitely. So I think many of the queries are being answered. So this is uh, what uh, we felt we should discuss with the aspirants regarding how to give a proper improved answer how to give a more illustrative answer so that you score better marks than others and how to avoid certain common mistakes while preparing for the examination and appearing for the combined geoscientist examination conducted by the Union Public Service Commission. So I hope it has been useful to the aspirants. It will prove useful uh, when they appear for the Examination. So when you, uh, uh, one question is there, uh, do we need to explain the terms which we have used in labeling? See, uh, if you are discussing the answer, then you can have those explanations. But if you are just writing, because there are uh, specific, uh, it depends on the kind of question. There are questions which tell you to draw, simply draw a sketch neat labeled sketch for a particular thing. So you are supposed to give a neat and labeled diagram. So you cannot start describing the terms in the labeling over there. But nevertheless, if it is a combination of text answer as well as a labeled diagram, you can definitely have those terms explained in the text part. Okay. So, uh, these are some of the questions I could see. Nidhi, uh, thank uh, you for a wonderful question. session. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think there is one question that is popping up is writing a note and writing an essay. Okay. Uh, if you can tackle that one. And there is whether we can use a sketch pen. Uh, uh, see, regarding sketch pen or regarding any other colored pens and all, uh, kindly make a note that the Union Public Service Commission in the announcement itself mentions that you can use a blue or black ballpoint pen and that's also I think on the safe side you should go with a single colored pen use a blue colored pen and if you are drawing diagrams use a pencil to draw the sketches or diagrams okay and even if you are underlining some word use a pencil that is good enough. Kindly do not use different colors for coloring the diagram. Do not use different color pens for writing. It's not, uh, it's not uh, allowed. It, it should not be done. And uh, the best uh, guide to appearing for the UPSC examination is the UPSC announcement. Every year you have to fill the form. The announcement gives a clear guideline as to how you are supposed to answer follow the guidelines which are provided and we do not use colored pens and colors and sketch pens please don't do that that is uh, one question the other question is right see if you are writing an essay type answer if you are asked to write an essay so what is required is that in an essay type answer you'll have paragraph wise answering you'll have a proper introduction a framework of the question uh, as per the question which has been asked and then you will have in the body you will have it differentiated into two three paragraphs depending upon the different points which you are covering and then you'll have a proper conclusion so that is answering in the kind of an essay type format so you're writing an essay on a particular statement which has been provided in the question so this is how you write an essay so when you're providing a note on something so in that case, you need not write very elaborately as you write in an essay. Nevertheless, 
try to have an introductory statement try to have a concluding statement and all the salient points here you have the liberty that you can put it in uh, you know a point form so that you have all the important points noted down so you have that but when you are asked specifically to write an essay on this then it should be structured in the form of an essay format okay so that that is the way you can answer a note and an essay i hope it is answered sir any other query can we draw diagrams with see sir again and again what i want to express is that uh, uh, be rest assured that upsc is the best institution to conduct exams and get them evaluated in the best possible manner with experts of all streams so you draw it with a pen and pencil it's not going to make uh, you know much of an uh, issue of that the best method is to draw a diagram with a pencil this is what we all of us are taught since the school days i don't think so any of us were taught to draw diagrams with pen and all so the best thing is you draw a diagram with a pencil and uh, you simply label it that's how diagrams are always drawn right so that is the best way to do it and uh, use single colored yeah use a single colored pen again it is mentioned in the notification please go through it and follow that thank you thank you so much thank you sir Thank you, Nidhi, for a wonderful session. Uh, I hope uh, participants have gathered much information uh, through your uh, this uh, lively presentation, and you have shared your experience very nicely. Yes, uh, what you have thought, what you have shared, is going to definitely going to help each and every one. Uh, there has been some queries regarding the vacancies. Let me clear uh, that we do not have any information regarding the vacancies. Vacancies are taken care of by. Uh, the central headquarter of gsi and uh, the upsc so please do not ask whether there will be vacancy or not whether you know uh, in coming five years what will be the vacancy type or what will be the post uh, here we are here, here to help our uh, share our expertise share our experience uh, and as you have seen uh, Hiri ma'am has uh, has been taking wonderful sessions since yesterday and uh, uh, let me tell you whatever we are sharing you can use in any of the examinations uh, whether or whether it is for gsi whether it is for cgwb or whether it is for any or whether it is for civil services of conducted by upsc or state psc you can use this knowledge in anywhere even in your msc uh, classes whatever we are saying is nothing from out of the sky we are saying what is available what is what we have felt uh, and uh, bringing it all the thoughts all the experience together in this platform and uh, you are most welcome to uh, again i am uh, getting whether there is a session for hydrogeology no there is no separate session of hydrogeology but the geology papers has been already taken care of by in uh, yesterday's session uh, from uh, i think uh, 4 pm onward these are available in our facebook accounts uh, which i have shared the link they will be in our timeline for next seven days. Please go through them. Take prepare your own notes. We are not going to, you know, uh, give any notes to you. Uh, no PPT will be shared. Those you, you have to take your own notes. As we have been saying, Nidhi Pants has been saying, you have to make your own notes. Each and every one of us saying, you have to extract the information uh, from the books, from the videos, from the websites. And make your own notes. So uh, please, uh, uh, as an exercise towards that uh, for a successful uh, cracking of different exam you have to make your own note and we believe you will also make your own note from the uh, different session which are available in our facebook account and uh, uh, they will be for next seven days i should repeat again and again they will be very uh, they will be available only for seven days after that we will uh, put it down and we cannot answer whether uh, which coaching classes you are there you please do all the googling uh, go do google business for getting your coaching centers and we are not here to help you on, on the coaching 
uh, uh, there are Nidhi, there is one question why you wanted to request you to please say something about this to those who, still, who are not of mathematics background for numerical portion bit tough sir if you want to crack geophysics i would uh, request you to get familiarized with mathematics there is no shortcut to not knowing you have to know what is being asked for uh, how can it, they make it easy for themselves please go through some yes as i have said you have to learn yourself and get the numericals uh, uh, solved in the exam paper yeah, thank you thank you very much i think nidhi will uh, lunch right now and we'll be here again on line at 2 45 pm our esteemed next speaker uh, sri pv sukumaran will be uh, online uh, uh, for from 3, three. Uh, he was in the interview board as a subject expert in gsi's uh, examination in upsc board i am talking about and he will be sharing his ideas, his knowledge, uh, how to crack uh, the UP, uh, interview. Uh, rather, he will share what will uh, interviewer looks for uh, in, in an interview. So be with us. And then, as we have been, many of you are asking whether there is a, a separate uh, discussion session with the geophysics or geology. Yes, the 12 uh, brightest uh, officers, uh, like uh, four from geology, from four from chemistry, four from geophysics, who have recently cracked UPSC 2019 uh, and joined Geological Survey of India, and they are undergoing training uh, right now uh, in different centers of GSA, Geological Survey of India Training Institute. They will be joining to take your questions, and they will be answering, and we'll be there with them to discuss whatever issues. Please jot down your issues, and I must request, as Didi has been saying since last year, yesterday, Please ask one after another. We have sufficient time from 3.30 3 to 4.30. We will have one hour of discussion. It's a long hour, one long hour of discussion. Please take your time, ask one after another all the questions, and it will be, it will be sorted out. OK. And somebody is uh, writing, uh, sir, are the questions in line with geophysical operations of GSI or the test general? graduate level geophysical knowledge. Sir, I think uh, um, Hanat Khanna has asked, please go through the lecture videos that I have been talking about. Go, uh, we have live streamed yesterday. Uh, see the videos, your answer will be uh, taken care of. Uh, again, I have said we have no inkling about uh, whether the post is getting reduced or whether there will be a more post. Uh, just wait and watch, uh, uh, as I said, this is not only for GSI examination, it is also preparing for you for taking up other PSC or UPSC examination. Mm, how to prepare note? You have to see the video and make your own note. Pause, write, pause, write, and make your own note. I have already shared the Facebook link. I, I think I should share it again. I think it is in, available in the chat box quite high above. Just copy paste the same comment and paste it here. Somebody is asking it again. The listen, it appears. I have said already at three live session starts, 245, you should be online. Okay. First, our guest speaker will uh, will be there from 3 to 3.30 to quarter to four. After that, for about 45 to one hour, our 12 guests will be there. Ma'am, you have a question. Nidhi, you have a question. Please don't use highlighters. Please don't use any other colors. Okay. Please use blue color pen and pencil for diagrams. That's all. Uh, Everything will be checked properly. Please be rest assured. This is the best institution which conducts exam in an unbiased and expertised manner. So everything will be checked. Please don't worry. Okay, it's not allowed. Please refer the notification. Thank you all. See you at 2.45. We'll be there from 3 onward, but I expect if you are there to join us from 2.30, it's okay, but be there at least from 2.45 onward. Thank you. Signing off for the timing right now. Yeah.
okay thank you thank you sir thank you to all so we'll again have a session at 3 and be there at 245 thank you so much